What? So I don't know. I was Verno, gonna say I Verno haven't Verno set up my, back, my hookup yet. Is he oh in the sauna? God. I don't want to see him if he's in the sauna. Well, he, he was here. He was having. You know? He was having audio problems. So, yeah. so. Hey, speak of the devil. We'll call this first world problems part seven. <laughs> Uh, first World Problems is now my life. That's the theme of my life now. If my life is a yeah. TV show, it's called First World Problems. Yeah, Brandy can talk to kiosk. to Adam in Australia. In Australia, not First a blip. Well, Adam's Listen on his fucking this. phone in the subway, and then I try and call her on <laughs> Skype. Our, our call goes to shit. Try and or call her on the phone, and <laughs> cell phone fucking dies. Yeah. Like, I talked to Adam. Adam was on his phone. Can you hear me? And, yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Adam was on his phone, uh, and yeah. I was talking to someone in Canada, too, uh, at the same time, in Halifax. So, like, two separate countries, very far apart, and one of them is on their phone. <laughs> on the bus in, in um, not a big city, either, like some little city in, in New South Wales. Erno has been exercised of the beard demons. Yeah. Exercise the demons. <laughs> I look silly. Oh, what I look silly really without my beard. I feel what does naked. She say? There's a phrase she you says, Our like Jehovah you. God. And she sounds like you a crazy Jehovah person. Our Jehovah, Jehovah God. And she you sounds like Jehovah I can God. I can hear the crazy in her eyes when she says that. Like I know she's all looking off in the, in the like a million miles away, like Jehovah God. I just know you it. Are Jehovah God. <laughs> I can see Russia from my house. Today's misogyny brought to you by your Jehovah God. <laughs> misogyny? I don't hate her because she's a woman. I hate her because she's crazy. Bitches <laughs> <laughs> be crazy. Bitches be crazy, but I'm not, I'm not a misogynist, though. <laughs> Just the bitches, not you all women. You have to be a person for, to, to consider that a woman-hating thing. She has to first be a person. Like, oh, dear. She is not oh, hey, we're on the air. <laughs> oh, I'm talking shit about Sarah Palin on the air. I'd rather not do that. <laughs> Why isn't there a thing that tells about, you, right? There is. It says live. I'm being funny. It's right okay. in front. Yeah, it's right in front of me. It's, yeah, it's yellow, right? It's like live. Yes. If only I knew. It's the brand to be quiet light. No. <laughs> oh, <laughs> shit. Abort. Abort. Oh, no. Oh, no. Take a left. Do not go down that road. Take a left. Hit reverse. I love that we're afraid of Sarah Palin, but not the Church of Scientology. <laughs> no, I'm not afraid of Sarah Palin. I just don't want people to think like I'm just a terrible human being because I'm just saying I'm not being uh, very skeptical. I'm just saying mean things about her. Like, that's not very... I think that was Michelle Bachman in that recording, by the way. It does. They both have that yeah. same far off look when difference? they talk about that. Well, Michelle Bachman's married to a gay guy, but I don't think she knows that. I don't think he's let her in on that yet. He, I'm I sorry, am, he, re he does restorative therapy. He's a real therapist. I am started. starting up my recording now. He's oh. a real therapist. He's a, a allegedly a real therapist. He does restorative therapy for gay teens. All right, I am my audacity evil. running. Audacity! Um, Exercise those demons out of me. Irrelevant skeptics. <laughs> Irrelevant skeptics? Oh. Oh. Possibly yeah. <laughs> Burn. Oh. Did oh I completely Irrelevant forgot to advertise this on Facebook today. Uh, you're fired. <laughs> Get out. Get so, out. You're, so you're going you do on more Dave social media me. than everybody. <laughs> Damnation. Wait, oh. who is a dogma debate? Who? What? Yeah, David Small. He always have fires Trent. Oh, oh yeah 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 yeah. Sometimes I think you gotta fire Rachel. Like I like her, but sometimes I'm like Rachel, you're fired. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, just to balance things out, be fair, you know. No, because she, she'll do stuff, and I think like, well, how can you? What? <laughs> what? <laughs> She's the female presence on that show. <laughs> She's the evolutionary biologist type. I don't know if she really is a lot about the science learning and whatnot. She's one of them book learn types. She is one of them book learning types, and she's real young, and so um, yeah, she she can make one think that have I don't like actually. <laughs> Could someone link me to that? You know who really does that is Indre Viscontis is like that, where it's like, huh? She studies what is it like cognitive science, and on top of it, is an accomplished opera singer. I'm like, you know what? What have I done with my life? Honestly, look how much she's accomplished, and she's about my age or slightly younger. <laughs> How is that even possible? I was kind of caught no unaware because uh, it seems that your daylight savings time ends sooner than ours. So, <laughs> oh, 
Wait. What? That's not a global. Oh, it is not a global thing. That's right. It's not. China yeah. doesn't even do it. China does not even do it. So funny. They tried it out, and they're like, yeah, after this. <laughs> We're not doing that anymore. All right, I guess beginning. So if nothing else, there. I will restart my recording because okay, I've got where did everybody go? Why, three why? minutes of nothing going on why here. I can't see everybody. I can't see anybody. I'm gonna go back out and come back in. I would suggest killing your video, oh, no. Randy, because you're very choppy. All right, so your face. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do the same because apparently when I move on video it looks like shit. So. Did you say my face is choppy? Come on. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Once that I will. Oh my god! I'm so fucking move, tired of American when you internet. Move I'm a so lot, yeah. goddamn sick of it. Hey, you wanna move? Yeah, I hear it's really good. Cheap, cheap and good. Or in the outback in Australia, it's pretty good. When I talk I heard, to Adam, it's fine. I heard, like, hey. I even got to see his chickens. He was moving the camera, like, taking me out back. Like, here's the chickens. Yeah, kill, your, kill your video, Brandy, because your, your audio, audio I can't shit. find it. Hold on. It's up at the top of the screen. I'm trying. I can't find it. Hold on. I've lost the whole thing. Sing. Did you just command me to Sing. No, I said saying it's gone. Sing oh, okay. for the years. Yeah, you're then. chopping out so bad we can only make out parts of your words, baby. Now it's frozen. In the name of Jesus, I command the spirits of poor connection speed to get out. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> no audio troubles. <laughs> In the name of Jesus. No oh yeah, what's troubles. that? What's that clip thing to on cognitive yeah. dissonance? <laughs> Cause it, it's demon. Well, I, I, look, it's the episode about demon, about exorcisms, and demons are trying to fuck up our our audio technology. <laughs> yeah. And we seem to have completely lost Brandy. <laughs> or more like. Sad trombone. All right, we'll give her a minute to get back in, and we will get started. <sighs> give me a link to the show notes. I need it. I'm not on my own PC. Okay, one second. Link is <coughs> in chat. There you go. Spank you. We are sans dumbass today. I still need to continue bugging him to give me my uh, the, his recording for the second Scientology show. What up with that? I don't know. He hasn't been responding. Maybe he's had enough of your poo, sir. I'm just hoping he hasn't pulled a Carlton on us. Carlton, wherever you are, we miss you. All right, well, hopefully that that's better. Hopefully. Hopefully. Damn, yeah, it's I hard working with I only one monitor. Guys. I couldn't see you, but I can hear you. That's what I mean when I say I've lost the window. It's like, it exists somewhere, but nope. If I go and look at something else or go online or whatever, nope, disappears. Which, mis which machine are you on? Hers. You can, that, on the taskbar at the bottom, if you just hover over the Chrome logo, it'll it'll show different windows, and you'll be able to find which one you look for. Presumably. Yeah, it's not the... Oh, fuck. <laughs> um, yeah. I'll do that. <laughs> I'll try that. All right. Is everybody ready to start recording? Um, started with Audacity. I have the document. iPad, is there anything else? Is this is it? the magic I have going on here. It's a, a lovely setup. You don't have video in my world, so... <laughs> <laughs> Mike has, or no, has, has video, and no one else does. Hmm. 
Ah, I turn, there we I go. Now I video, see your video. I turned my video okay, off. Now I see my better audio quality. Okay. Or no, I think it looks nice. No, no, that is creepy and weird. You look like a pedophile. Take it off. Ew. <laughs> Ew. Or a porn star. Or, or from the 70s, yeah, like you didn't get the memo. Ew. <laughs> a porn stash. Brown chicken, brown cow, brown cow. You look really young, though, like a, ber like a berserker fan, a very young berserker fan. You could hang out with Jay and Bob in front of the convenience store, like, berserker. <laughs> Are we good to go? I'm hearing a lot of airy sounds in somebody's background here. It can't possibly be my fan. That would be inconvenient. <laughs> no, it's fine. Is that better? Is that better? How's this stuff? Slightly. Okay, well... Oh. You look like a villain who ties somebody to the railroad tracks. Alright, I'm, I'm just going to walk away for a second. I'll be back and we can maybe start then. <laughs> He's going to have an aneurysm. do 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 Oh yeah, no 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 yeah. It's sure. a me, Erno. <laughs> no, you look like you would be tying a woman to the tracks in a Bullwinkle cartoon. What are you? Your cipher from the Matrix, the the guy who betrayed them. Yeah. <laughs> oh, the guy who yeah. goes and eats a steak. I'm like, I'd rather be living that life. I, I'm with him on that. I take the other pill. I don't know what's up with that. Like, oh, uh, let's see. There's there's a place where there's a beautiful woman and a steak, and then there's a place where it's like a hell realm, and I'm always in, yeah. in some kind of bowl. Yeah. No, I, thank you. I never the truth really is overrated, the, my friends. I never really saw the upside of leaving the Matrix. <laughs> well, no, just taking that that pill in the first place. That'd be the only except way. if you fucking hate the friends. Uh, the TV show sitcom, because it's always pretty much 1999 in the Matrix. So, fuck. <laughs> it's it's also just stupid sitcoms. It's either Seinfeld or Friends. Uh, what did I watch back then? I don't know. The DVR. I didn't have DVR or whatever. I didn't have a way to record, so I, I was in college. Let's see, since 1996. So, yeah. uh, I don't know. I scheduled my life around Oprah. Modems. So. Yeah. 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 Well, we were in the dorm had a had you know whatever the university connection was fine, but um, I scheduled my life around Oprah back then. So instead of friends, I was concerned with like no four o'clock class for me because I have to be home to watch Oprah in the dorm. <laughs> I had a web TV. I had the latest technology. I had a web TV. Oh wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And a friend in Cyprus, which I thought was a made up place. I'm like, that's not a real smart place, TV. Cyprus. Two decades too early. Yeah. It so was if awesome you don't... though. It really was. I loved it. So if you don't like the 1990s, then you're probably pretty much fucked in the Matrix. The one good thing about the 90s, I can say Calvin Klein did many, many a, a wonderful outfit in the 90s. Lowest in black, and I like the fashion in the 90s. Mm -hmm. The pants that go uh, over your navel. The dream of the 90s. No, 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 no. We already got the memo. The low rise was already happening, because I hit college in 1996, and I remember, like, Pants were definitely reasonable by that time. In my okay. high school, the I'm girls who got their belly buttons pierced... Yeah, you are the young one. The girls who got belly buttons pierced when I was in high school, they would always tear in their jeans because it was mom jeans back then. Yeah. Actually, I mom think jeans. Erno's younger than I am. I don't know, you're like 26, 27? What? 28. 28, yeah. I was born in 1978. I am 35. 82, bitches. 86. 82 or 82. I remember what was on the radio in 1982. I remember when Madonna came out with Lucky Star. That's how old I am. Are we recording a podcast or something? <laughs> I don't know. I, think I am good to go whenever everybody else is good to go. John looks like he's you okay? to load. Since we're yes. live, I can say uh, oh, he is. I need to take a piss, and then I'll be back and we can start. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my That's God. It. Hi, I'm baby. How are you? Are you any better now? Oh, my God. I told you I remembered to, to you know, shut the mic off from the hangout, but but the audible, aud <laughs> but the audacity, I was like, son of a bitch. <laughs> Hi, John. What's the show all about? Uh, the 1980s and 
not exorcism, I think. <laughs> Actually, I think that's when that came out, wasn't it? I see it is. Uh, I watched it in I don't know, childhood. Uh, like, uh, 19... I rewatched it, though, the other night. The Exorcist. It was better than I remember. Huh. So I'm going to say the 70s. Really? I was born in 78, and it wasn't that dated when I saw it. So It was still scary when I saw it. If only there was a way to find out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, if only we had access to that. Yeah, that tech, that technology. Inter, inter, n net? Yeah. I'll so, write a letter to the studio and, and ask them. So now that Erno has returned, I think we're ready to go. Or are we? I'm, I'm ready when everyone else is. Okay, yeah. let's go. Sync us up, good sir. So, on the count of five, everyone say the power of Christ compels you. <laughs> One, <laughs> two, three, four, five. The power, the power of Christ, the power compels, of Christ you. compels you. <laughs> ah, doesn't it, though? <laughs> All right, well, welcome to the Irreverent Skeptics Podcast. With me today are... <laughs> right. I'm Brandy. Uh, and and Erno. I am the devil. And Michael McElroy. Hello. Mike Bowler. Beware the Ides of March. Yeah, I'm indeed. John... <laughs> I'm John Ombi, and protect. demons apparently haunt our podcast today. What? It says you're Turk Ferguson. Yeah, it does, and it also yeah. says in the notes if everyone had said their part, I would have said that. So. Aww. Aww. It requires it requires reading the first three lines of the notes, and then I would have done that. <laughs> Let's try Just this three again. lines. Let's not. No, no, not, no, no he, he will not. You you shot your load on that one. Oh Gross. my god, we're in trouble. This is off to a start. So, <laughs> we're professionals. <laughs> so, so John, what's our topic this week? We are talking about exorcisms. I guess exorcisms and possession, really, since they go hand in hand. Hot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so let's uh, let's talk about what exorcism is. So I went to uh, newadvent.org, which is a Catholic encyclopedia, and. I'm going to read the punctuation in this because it's so fantastically terrible. Yes, uh, the quote, their definition of exorcism is, exorcism is the act of driving out, comma, or warding off, comma, demons, comma, or evil spirits, comma, from persons, comma, places, comma, or things, comma, which are believed to be possessed or infested by them, comma, <laughs> or are liable to become victims or instruments of their malice, semicolon, <laughs> <laughs> the means employed for this purpose, comma, especially the solemn and authoritative adjuration of the demon, comma, <laughs> in the name of God, comma, or any other higher power in which he is subject. That is the most awful grammar I've ever Period. seen, and I am no grammatical expert. <laughs> so that's wow. that's the uh, Catholic butchered uh, definition of exorcism, but Catholicism is not the only uh, Christian or religious denomination that defines Catholicism. So, Michael McElroy, uh, tell us a little bit about Protestant Protestantism. All right. That's right, John. Catholics definitely don't have the monopoly on exorcisms. Exorcism kind of goes pretty much everywhere. Uh, in mainline Protestantism, most Protestants who believe in exorcism also believe that if you're a true Christian, you're filled with the Holy Spirit, and that means that you can't have another spirit, like a demon or a, a ghost or whatever, enter into you as well. And the ability to sense that someone is possessed in need of deliverance from the spirits or whatever, is it's a spirit gift from the Holy Spirit. Wait, wait, uh, are you I've, telling me they have the cock block <laughs> theory of uh, filled with the spirit? Is that what you're telling Basically, me? Basically, yes. Okay, I'm just making sure I understood it. Okay. You can only so fit no one DP. in there at a time. There's no, <laughs> DP, no spiritual DP going on. We are uh, <laughs> three and a half minutes in and our first dick joke. <laughs> da, 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 da. <laughs> so the ability We're to, getting better to sense... It. The ability to sense that someone's possessed is a spiritual gift confer conferred upon a spirit-filled Christian by the Holy Spirit as per the list of spiritual gifts in 1 Corinthians 12. 
how many spirits there? I don't know. I don't think I could possibly use the word spirit more times in the sentence than I just did. So, uh, could you use more commas? Probably comma, but I don't want to, period. Pro Protestants often attribute specific behaviors to being possessed by spirits. John is losing his shit right now. Like <laughs> D&D? Well, dr things like drunkenness, homosexuality, depression, promiscuity, basically any sort of sinful behavior that can try to say that it's a spirit or an evil demon. I have most of those spirits, you. I guess, or most of those Hello. demons. Can you guys do anything about that? <laughs> well, according to Protestants, you can. So, yeah, they, they, say, they usually blame these things on some sort of <laughs> diabolical in, influence as a result of being possessed I by an actual mean... spirit or as a result of lack of faith, which allows the devil to tempt you into sin. So and... I have a lack of faith that I have John as my bad influence, so that's all I need. <laughs> yeah. One word do I need? I'm at risk. I'm but here I, for I you actually, all, uh, people. We're doomed. <laughs> <laughs> so John's a demon. Basically, yeah. Oh, I was actually in a church service once where a friend of mine tried to get the pastor to deliver her from a spirit of jealousy, which is interesting. Um, in some well, churches... It is a demon-haunted world. Thank you, Carl. Did you see you. the funny comments? I thought that was pretty funny about Jelly School. Like, what's the point of the commentary if not to make smart-ass comments? Uh, it's all on the margin, the weird little comment. I can't see it right now. I had it scrolled off my screen. No, so. not now. No, no. I, I did say apparently she wasn't ready for that jelly. Oh, my God. Oh. You did. You uh, did. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, I'll shut up now. <laughs> Both of us, yeah. But, so, anyway, in, in some churches, there's the uh, Ethiopian Orthodox Tiwahito Church. I probably should have looked up how that's pronounced. But apparently they, they attribute a person's failure to medical to respond to medical treatment to demons, and the congregation will respond by getting together and attempting to exercise the demon and allow the healing to continue. There are some parts of the Methodist Church that also practice exorcism. They, they exercise more than just people, though. There's a story on the Wikipedia article about exor exorcism, about uh, exercising a house to get rid of the evil, spir evil spirits in it that are causing all sorts of uh, strife and discord in the house. I'm hearing myself. Somebody... Tell me that's not me. I don't know. Anyway, um, so yes, beside the Methodists, Lutherans also officially promote the practice of exorcism. They state explicitly that God gives the devil permission to possess people, which is kind of an interesting theology if you think about it. Um, according to the Pastoral Handbook of the Lutheran Church, in general, satanic possession is nothing other than an action of the devil by which, from God's permission, men are urged to sin, and he occupies their body in, in order that they might lose eternal salvation. Thus, bodily possession is an action by which the devil, from divine permission, again, possesses both pious and impious men in such a way that he inhabits their bodies not only according to activity, but also according to essence, meaning he's actually the essence of the devil is in you and torments them either for the punishment or for the discipline and testing of men and for the glory of divine justice, mercy, power, and wisdom. So to I, the, the Lutheran Church, possession is, is all about doing God's work. That's what I was going to ask. Work. So that is God, God allows or wills that the devil inhabit the yeah. person in that case. That's very strange. I, I suppose in a, in a manner of speaking that in any... In any um, Christian ideology that possession is actually at least God allows if doesn't if doesn't will it you know with the whole with God being omniscient and omnipotent yeah if God is sovereign over his creation then basically nothing can happen that he doesn't at least allow yeah mm -hmm. so I Mike think, um, I think Lutheran Church doesn't promote uh, exorcisms no okay yeah but I mean no. it's a pussy ass church anyway so. <laughs> Here in the U.S., at least, um, that you will that you will really hear of that it's mostly just charismatic and Catholic denominations that you'll hear speaking right. about exorcisms. I I've never until today I've never heard of Methodist or Lutheran exorcisms. Yeah, and I think a lot of spiritualist churches do it also. The the ones mm -hmm. that are kind of a mix of Christianity and new new age kind of mm -hmm. beliefs. Yeah, I think most uh, most other Lutherans would uh, exercise the Finnish Lutheran Church since they have transgender uh, transgender priests and everything. Oh, that's that's progressive and fantastic, yeah. I might add. So, Mike, so now we know a little bit about uh, Christians and their 
beliefs and practice of exorcism. What about uh, other religions? Who else uh, yeah, the, has the this Christians. craziness? Not only do the Catholics not have a monopoly, but the Christians themselves don't have a monopoly on what? exorcism. What? Get out. No. <laughs> Go so on, sir. <laughs> it, it appears in a bunch of the other major religions as well. Hinduism, Islam, and Judaism all, all have their own forms of exorcism, although it, in Islam and Judaism, they're kind of more the mystical sects, and not every sect of Islam will do it. Like, I think the the story about Islam is that there's only one of the four Sunni sects of Islam that actually practices exorcism, and it's mostly in India and Pakistan. But um, anyway, in, in Hinduism, uh, beliefs and practices to ex exorc uh, related to exorcism are pretty much uh, they're pretty prominent in Hinduism, actually. Of the four Vedas, the holy books of the Hindus, the Atharva Veda is said to contain secrets related to magic and alchemy, which are involved in the process of exorcism in Hinduism. Basically, you, uh, you there's a mon there are mantras that people chant, and I don't know what a yajna is. I should have looked that up. <laughs> the, the mantra and the yajna are used in both the Vedic and Tantric traditions. And the Va Vaishnava tradition also employs recitation of names of Nars Narasimha, which is one of the Hindu holy figures. I really should have looked all this up. <laughs> uh, I'm nothing if not unprofessional. And they, they also read scriptures. You're in good company. The <laughs> we are all. Purana. So they also believe that beyond these spiritual possessions and exorcisms, that you can be haunted by human ghosts. And according to Gita Mahat Mahatmya of Padma Purana, uh, which is another uh, Hindu text, reading the third, seventh, and ninth chapter of the Bhagavad Gita and mentally offering the result to departed persons helps them to get released from their ghostly situation. That's Isn't this the same book that they used to justify the ancient aliens theory? The Bhag Bhagavad Gita? I don't. Is it? I don't. So, so I they have that. like the Vidyamas or something. Uh, the man of the Shastra. Sh the Shastra. The yeah, man of like Shastra. Okay, yeah. Yeah. So yeah, it, it, that was. Oh, I, yeah. I, I'm, I, it's a fake no book. Idea. Oh, it's a fake, a fake Hindu holy book. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. So it's, it's <laughs> fan fiction. How do you Hindu authenticate a holy book? That's what I'm wondering. Well, well it wasn't so much that. It wasn't so much that it was the guy that uh, who had t transcribed it. He he channeled the spirit to uh, get all the all that information. Gotcha. Okay. In the fifties, nineteen fifties, I believe. Seems legit. Yeah. <laughs> In Islam, and I'd really like to add giggity giggity goo tantric <laughs> tradition. <laughs> oh God. Now in Islam. Uh, which, like I mentioned before, not all Muslims practice or even really know or hear about exorcism because it's not very common. It's only one of the Sunni sects that practices it, really. Exor exorcism is called rukia. Um, it's used to repair the damage caused by sir, which is uh, black magic. And exorcisms today are part of a bigger, wide body of alternative medicine in Islam, which is called ultib al nabwi which is the medicine of the prophet. So it, it's based on things from the Quran and from the Hadith, which you, are supposed to be healings. Can you think of a like a douchebag from California going, "Oh God, I need some Altib al Nabawi therapy"? Just about now. <laughs> Altib al Nabawi? Yeah, sure. That sounds legit. Um, <laughs> but I can in picture it at least. <laughs> yeah, there's gonna be a new new clinic opening up somewhere. Let me get your profit healing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> make <a> good profit. <laughs> it's a non-profit profit. Go get center. your profit. <laughs> TM. Snake oil. Get your snake oil. Yes, snake oil. It's guaranteed. Yes. Ninety-nine percent pure snake oil. You heard it here first, folks. <laughs> so, Mike, what else do you have about so uh, it, Islam and exorcisms? Well, in in the exorcisms that are performed by these this Sunni sect, they basically the person li lays down in a sheik. A shake, sheik. How are you supposed to say that? Shake, I think. A sh shake pl puts their hand. Like shake, their hand, like shake and bake, yeah. Shake it like a Polaroid picture. Yeah, they they <laughs> they put their hand on the patient's head and they start reciting verses from the Quran and sometimes they they feed them holy water as well. And also specific, salt water. Well, the, there are specific verses from the Quran that are talking about glorifying God and invoking God's help for things, and they they usually read those. And some sometimes if it if 
the spirit or the jinn is really bad, then they start reciting the call to prayer, which is supposed to help repel non-angelic beings like the jinn. So, Brandy, um, you have a you have a, a good bit of knowledge and history in terms of Islam. So, tell us your, your take on this. What do you know about this? Um, I actually never heard of any kind of possession or anything like that. When I was Muslim, there was uh, some very minor discussion about what the jinn were, and basically, um, I was told <laughs> to ignore it. I mean, it's a matter of like little mischievous things, like oh, you know, your keys are going in your show, you put them in a certain spot, or you know, just really simple things. They're not, they're not the big scary demons. They're not capable of possession. Just um, little minor, kind of like leprechauns. Like it's more of a mischievous thing, and you're really not supposed to pay them any any attention and obsess about them. Mm -hmm. So yeah. that's probably why there's no prescribed rights. And, and also, as Islam doesn't have clergy uh, appropriately, so there'd be no one to, to sort of be the priest in the situation. Right. Um, people that get referred to, it's it's either a cultural title or it just means that they've been, um, they've studied the Quran and they've you know educated themselves. They're scholars. It's like saying, let me go ask a librarian, in their opinion. You know, it's just an education. Yeah. With so this is, but they don't have any special line to God. They're not like popes or priests where they talk to God at all. Like no, no intercession between man and God. So this is a tad off topic then, but I'm curious. So in uh, in a mosque and Islamic services, since they don't have clergymen, is it more of an ad hoc type deal, or does someone just kind of take the lead? They step forward and take the lead on that, or how does that work? So you no, don't it's have to like go going extensively. I'm just anything and. It's like anything else with where someone as an expert, but my point is that that he doesn't have special relationship with God. He's a scholar. He knows the book inside and out. And there may be the same scholar who gives the prayer um, every every week, or or mm -hmm. it changes. When the mosque I went to, there was a pretty um, good rotation. It would be just different people and from different countries. So, um, but the prayer is always done in Arabic, no matter where you're from. So regardless of the world, you'll understand the whole service as far as the the. Formula, the formulaic parts, the ritualized parts. Right. Maybe in who knows what language, but the prayer is always going to be in Arabic, so call to prayer and prayer itself, you can at least do that. Obligated. It's not a, a matter of choice. Right. Excellent. Yeah, from what I was so reading, I hear, the, the oh, Islamic exorcisms largely take place in Pakistan and India. So it, Yeah, it's, it makes me think, are they Sunni, really? Because that's yeah. a lot of that's Shia that's Shia territory that's Shia and they're only the twelve percent and they do some uh, exotic things and like the Sufis they do some exotic things that the Sunnis don't do. But w yeah, yeah, they're they're definitely a minority of, of Muslims that's for sure. Mm -hmm. uh, this this group. But I was reading about uh, apparently their their theology holds that every human being has a jinn that accompanies them, and basically you, you could, if you if you're not careful you can become possessed by the jinn. And Muhammad himself huh. was supposed to have a jinn as well, but he made the the jinn submit to him and work for the glory of Allah. Maybe it's the very rudiments of the angel devil they show in cartoons all the time. Like you have your your <laughs> good side, bad side thing that they recognize it, but they really Maybe. at least when I was you know I was around a largely Lebanese um, Shia and um, you know there's were very modern people. They were at college, so. Uh, they shied away from anything that was like superstitious or could be right. seen as like, oh, isn't that quaint or provincial? You know, it's that kind of thing. So that makes sense. You might find a you might find a hillbilly in Alabama who's like, oh, be careful, don't walk under a ladder, that kind of thing. It's like, oh, whereas I might say, oh, that's ridiculous. That's for people, you know, that's for simple people who believe in superstition. So it was that same yeah. kind of thing, I think. You know, and it's not mentioned much in the book at all, as far as the Quran or the Hadith. Yeah, yeah, it's it's definitely not a mainstream thing in Islam. But, uh, it's not prescribed in the books, and the books are don't change over time. That's the other thing. I don't know if people know that who are listening. The book is whereas Christianity will, will sort of evolve over time, and they revise the books every once in a while. Islam is forbidden to change. So if it's not in the the Quran or the Hadith, it's considered usually an illegitimate idea automatically. It's like okay, okay well, where where is your Quranic reference? You don't have one, then your idea is worthless. Yeah, yeah. The Islamic tradition is that the Quran has never changed, although archaeologists yeah. would quibble with that. So, <laughs> yeah. so uh, what about Judaism? Is there anything in uh, yeah the culture about that? Not that I would know it by reading the notes. Yeah, it's 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 kind of interesting. It's very different from the. Um, what most people have heard about in Judaism, because Judaism, you know, you think it's mostly a laid-back religion that's almost kind of humanistic, because it's more about the practices and the traditions for for most Jews, from what I've heard. But in in the Kabbalistic tradition, which is a really mystical sect of Judaism, and it's 
I'm not even sure if it's really old or if it's one of those things that's been portrayed as old, kind of like how people say that Wicca is the, the Druid's return or something like that. But there are records I think it of, is, though, the Pope, right? The, the, the Cabal, Kabbalah? Madonna's their leader, right? She depicts his Kabbalah. I, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, uh, so She's their leader. The, there actually are references to exorcisms be t- being performed in mainstream Judaism I- in antiquity. Uh, for example, in the writings of Josephus, who is uh, an ancient Jewish scholar who wrote about the, the happenings of the history of the Jews in the first century and who's kind of been perverted by people who wanted to, to promote Christianity using some of his writings that had been added to by other people. So anyway, his writing and the Dead Sea Scrolls both mention uh, Jewish exorcism happening in the first century and before that, whenever the Dead Sea Scrolls was, were written, which was a few centuries B.C., I'll have to look that up. Um, but yeah, they, basically, the key, the key to any Jewish, Jewish exorcism is having a truly pious man who could be an Abba, a Baal Shem, Baal Shem, Rabbi, or a Rabbi conducting the ceremony. Basically, they, the exorcist will ritually purify himself, either according to some traditional Jewish practice or, or by special means, like anointing himself with water and oil. Uh, they might in, in, invoke the presence of some beneficent spirits to assist them. Um, a lot of the of exorcisms mentioned in the Dead Sea Scrolls were public events, which were either performed in a synagogue or at least requiring the presence of a minion, which is a, a quorum of ten men that makes up the, the ritual quorum. Um, usually they did an exorcism in the case of certain symptoms arising in people, swellings, paralysis, markings appearing on the body, strange bodily sensations, things like that. And they looked for those for diagnostic purposes to try to determine exactly what was going on. Uh, they they would often interview the demon or a, or the dibuk, which is a possessing spirit, which is like a person's ghost, which is possessing someone. And they w- the exorcist would take a personal history of the possessing entity to try to or- to understand what was motivating it to possess the person and help get get rid of it more easily. Uh, apparently, a lot of these spirits were really forthcoming and and talkative, and they would just give all sorts of information about themselves, and it was really very strange, which, um, and sometimes the exorcist would coerce cooperation from them by fumigation, which is exp-
So, so this is interesting. What just happened uh, when I went to restart the Hangout, it gave me this new disclaimer saying, oh, read this stuff about understand these things, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, is that like is that what happened? They just pushed out something and it killed our Hangout? I don't know if that's it. Don't know. Hmm. I could see everyone was here and you could see me typing, but I, I couldn't hear you and I guess you couldn't hear or see me. Nope. nope. I, and I lost video. I just saw that there were participants very weird. Mm -hmm. Alright, we'll get it back here in a second. Um, <coughs> you want to start back at the beginning of Judaism, or did you finish reading that out? No, I finished reading it out. Okay, um, you just want to throw it to me then for my stupid joke that I don't feel like making now, but I will. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm just going to do a little exorcism now. Hey, actually, what you just read there... How about if we put some uh, like Gregorian chant or something quietly underneath that? That on top of it, and put that as either our intro. Yeah, do that as like the intro while Brandy's reading the credits. Okay. Or, be, or before <laughs> well, she reads the credits, then she nice. reads it and then throw it to the start because that is fucking perfect. From uh, uh, Monty Python and the Holy Grail, where they do that. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. How how much of that are we allowed to use without having to pay some kind of royalties or something? Um, Less than a minute. Oh, okay. I think 30 Probably. seconds. Okay, yeah. so when Brandy gets back, Mike, you want to resync us, then you can start us back up there on the... I never shut up. On the, on the part that I now have something to rant about, sort of. Yeah, I have my Audacity running, too. Okay, yeah, I left mine running and recording the whole time, so... Yeah, me Welcome too. Welcome back, Brandy. I, we have no idea what happened. My best guess was they may have pushed out some kind of update on Hangouts, because when I went to restart it, it gave me some new thing I had to agree to. So, I don't know. Do we want to post to the, the community? Because there were people watching. <laughs> I saw zero viewers at the time. Did you see viewers? Paulina Friedman said she was going to go, so I don't know. Oh. There are uh, three posts about this on there somehow. Let me. I'm making a comment now. I just started up the same Hangout, so presumably... Because it says on there, yeah. if you go to our Hangout event, it says, we'll be right back. So I presumably are just going to start back up. I don't know. Let's see. Brandy, can you hear us? I don't see Brandy. I don't hear Brandy. I see she's here, but I don't hear her. Are you muted by chance? Okay, good. Yeah, the same link works. Okay. So um. Tell Brandy we can't see or hear her. So, people listening, we're having some technical difficulties. Please wait. Yeah. Technical <laughs> That was fucking lovely. Let's go out to the lobby. Let's go out to the lobby. Let's go out to the lobby and have ourselves a snack. <laughs> nice. <laughs> uh, Brandy dropped. She's coming back. So Mark, this is a very skeptics after this. This is a very <laughs> appropriate introduction to the next section. <laughs> Isn't it though? Ah, oh, damn. <laughs> Too bad I don't know the Latin phrase for technical difficulties. <laughs> Technica clusterfuckery. <laughs> I don't know. Clusterfuckus technicus. Snafu. <laughs> Indeed.
Brandy's typing something. She's trying to get back in. So Google Translate's Latin translation is not so great. I typed in, we are having problems with technology, and in response it said, lorum ipsum dolor difficile habent. <laughs> so apparently technology is translated to lorum ipsum, which is like a placeholder text thing that they people use when they're uh, doing like layouts and stuff like that. Lorum ipsum dolor sit amet, or whatever. She said audacity I goof the floof. <laughs> Shit. I think it's just my beard. Shout because I don't have it. It crashes the whole the internet. The spirit Google of the beard. Google stocks will plummet. Ah. So, Excellent. Brandy, did you lose your recording? Do we have to do the whole thing again? Hang on. <laughs> Never fret, friends. That webcam she got is a really good webcam, but because it's Windows 7 and it has weird thing, it has just problems sometimes with USB devices. She uh, commonly has to unplug and reconnect her webcam. Are you drinking coffee through a straw? That's just boiling hot coffee. coffee too. Ice, ice, baby. Ding, 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 too cold, too cold. Under pressure. <laughs> God, all these people pitching a bitch about Amazon's prime price hike. If they you don't want it, go get it. A whole lot of them. Oh, hi, we're live. <laughs> no, we're not. <laughs> yes, we are. No, we're not. We absolutely we're not broad are. We are not broadcasting. It says, it live, says live. Yeah, it's that, there's a little red dot next to live. It'll be green when we're live. No, it says oh. off air when we're off the air. Oh well. Yeah, you ought to say that. Yeah. I said it, so everybody that bitches about uh, Amazon Prime raising their <laughs> price twenty dollars after all these years, yes, you're a bunch of bitchy cunts. So there you go. <laughs> What's Amazon Prime? Uh, oh, Amazon has a service where for so much per year, it was seventy nine dollars per year. Now it's going to be ninety nine dollars. Uh, you get free free two day shipping on eligible items. Um, what that means is if it's something Amazon keeps in stock or one of their partner companies that however it is that they work that they they make their stuff uh, eligible for Amazon Prime, you get free two-day shipping. Otherwise, if it's just some, like if I'm selling stuff on there and I don't have whatever agreement it takes, then you would have to pay regular shipping costs. And also you get... Uh, Oh, I see. Free, you get free video streaming, which is similar to Netflix and similar in ways that it's like. Although it's a it, limited selection, some stuff. Well, is so is Netflix. I mean, they're both equally <laughs> shitty selections. Netflix is a little better, I think, but. Yeah, well, both, I mean, for shitty. Netflix, Netflix, the entire library of streaming stuff is available. The Amazon Video thing, you still have to pay for some stuff that's available to stream. Correct. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. So what that is is like. Think of it as two different services. You have a Netflix-like service where you have stuff that you can stream with this paid service, but then also they have on-demand content that you can purchase or rent, uh, whereas Netflix doesn't do that. So if you like, I don't know, like Google Play, for instance, you can buy or rent videos on there. Uh, so Amazon's doing the same thing. In addition to that, they have stuff that you can stream for free. I think so. there's, with a Prime membership also, I have a Kindle and I haven't really looked into it much, but I think there's some stuff that's available for Prime members uh, for free on there. Like, you can you can read it without owning it for a while. Like, I guess, free rentals or something. So, so any any luck on Brandy's end? She's rebooting, and then uh, we'll oh, give it a go. <laughs> Hopefully she was able to save her Audacity file for the first I part. I really hope so. Yeah. I don't know what this renting is. Could you explain it to me? If not, at least, at least you only have to pull the audio out of a little... Bit of, fuck, I don't yeah, know. of the main feed. After the show, I'm going to get back to my ranch. Well, here's some good news. Right. Um, the uh, the recruiter that I've been working with, or one of them that I've been working with in Pittsburgh, got me an interview while I was there. Like, instant interview. I interviewed with him 
uh, a couple of days after I landed, and then two days later he had me at a company interviewing, and it looks like they're going to give me an offer. So then maybe a month, maybe I'll be moving to Pittsburgh. Nice. And when I'm there, yeah, when I'm there, I will work on a better setup for recording for myself and for Brandy. <laughs> Get so, her like, I, well, when, I, I decided to wait until I move before I order a better mic setup and things like that. And I, I don't know if I'll have room wherever I move to like, to set up a crinkle, studio crinkle. like room or something. That that would be nice. We'll see what happens. <laughs> I don't know what happened to our Q&A that we used to get people in there, and now it's just been dead. It's because Dennis Solaro isn't here. I know. Come on, Dennis. I miss <laughs> you, man. Yeah, he went hiking. Hiking. Nature. Randy's also using my old laptop. Um, uh, it's, a, it's a few years old. It's not terrible, but it's not fantastic either. I want to get a machine that rivals my work machine. When I move that, or get a really nice new laptop, one or both. I don't know. despise this laptop I'm I'm on right now. <laughs> it doesn't do anything right. My two monitor, fucking high-end PC home, does everything right. I can have the show notes and everything up, and have you. On where big where are you right now? At my parents. Ah uh, yes. Because old people apparently don't know how to buy a computer. So I have a question. Um, you guys, when you're recording, when you mute yourselves, do you just mute only on Hangouts, or do you mute the mic itself? I use hard mute. Yeah. I just okay. realized that there is the hard mute button there in the the microphone properties, yeah. See, I was using that hard mute, and that's when you keep getting this problem of me, of my volume spiking, so I stopped doing that. Huh. That doesn't happen yeah, with mine. With me, it keeps the volume constant. Pretty so constant. you go to recording devices, then microphone, go to properties on yeah. that? Is that what yeah. you're doing? Have Except you, uh, in a different language. Levels. Over on the sound properties, have you gone to the communications tab and hit do nothing when Windows detects communication activity? I have not. Yep. Reduce volume. Because it's oh, fucking okay. annoying if Windows does. Do so let me apply that. And let's try. I'm going to test this again, so I apologize if it blasts your ears, but I'm going to mute and unmute. And see if that does anything. So one moment. Where the fuck is it? There it is. No, there. Okay, so I'm gonna be talking now. Now I'm talking again, and now I'm talking again, and now I'm. Yeah, it got louder. Yeah, it constantly it. gets louder. <laughs> like spikes really loud. Wonder. Technology. See, because hey, what I was thinking was, if I get a different, maybe if I get a different mic, I won't have a problem, but... Uh, get yourself one of these nice USB mics. I got a Samsung CO1U. It's very nice. Disable. I can disable sound effects. Let's see if that helps. So let's try this. I think I hear Brandy. I don't hear anything. I hear an airy sound in the background that I that, often hear oh, on Brandy's recordings. It might be mine, because I was jacking with my settings. Ah. You know, Let's see if it suddenly goes away. Yep. God damn it. Ew. It's ah, like I'm a raw now. Hang on, I'm so jacking with it. And now I Brandy apologize. doesn't see or hear anyone. Something is going wrong with the Hangouts today. <clears throat> so, what, what do we do? Switch to Skype? I, I had the same problem earlier. <laughs> Let's just do that. Let's switch over to. We'll do a Skype voice yeah. call for the rest of this. So anyone that sorry, viewers. anyone that catches up with us, we're sorry, but you will be able to download this episode before too long. So. In the future. That's right. All right I'm gonna drop this now. I will. I will call you guys momentarily. <laughs>